Hi guys, Eli here with Getting Lost with Eli. How are you? Doing a little uh, little video here at a one of our local parks. It's Lime Bluff Recreation Park here in uh, Hughesville, Pennsylvania. And I've got my my mask mask covering for today because here in Pennsylvania we have to no matter where we go we have to have some kind of a mask. Uh, stores especially you won't you won't be allowed in any store period without some kind of a mask this wouldn't be what I would wear to a store but I'm here at a local park and there are people around so I have at least something um, wanted to do video two in what's in my bag series and today we're gonna go over real quick my bag the first aid kit as well as my EDC or my everyday kit so stick around we'll go through this here quick and maybe have a little bit of tea and some soup. All right, everybody. So let's go ahead and start in with the first aid pouch. Um, I'm gonna put a link down where you can find these pouches. I got them on Amazon. And they were, I think at the time I bought them, only about six, seven dollars. Uh, maybe a little bit more, but check down below. I'll, uh, I'll put a link in for these pouches. Both are the exact same pouch. They both have uh, the type of uh, Molly attachment on the back. Show you that a little closer. You can see, and then these snaps come undone. So you can put them like I did through the Molly attachments on the front of my bag, on the sides, at least my bag. Uh, but your bag, if it has any of the Molly straps or any strap at all, you can hook these on there actually really easily. The nice part is you can also put your belt through these. Uh, you can put a backpack strap or your waist strap, uh, if it's small enough, through these loops as well. It also has the loop on the top, so you can carabine it uh, or even clip it directly to your pack, uh, to your tent, to your guy line, whatever you want to use while you're at camp. But uh, for this one, we're just going to go ahead and open it. It has a zip all the way around. And on this particular one, hopefully you can see this, um, I just have a little thing of gauze that's still in its wrap so it's completely clean. Uh, we have on this piece, now in this bag it has a couple of different attachments. A little cord here has a uh, one of those little spray things of Neosporin. So that's <laughs> at least a good thing to have on you. Uh, some medical scissors, uh, some Gorilla Glue in the small tube. That way in case you need to close up a wound real quick, you can do that. Or for gear repair, uh, but in this case for, for wound closure. Um, on this side, I do have two things. I have, if I don't throw it, Advil and Tylenol, and they're both in the small little containers. Uh, these work really, really great. And on the other side, I have a mini toothbrush and a thing of toothpaste, as well as some of these Listerine cool strips. Uh, so you always have fresh, clean, fresh and clean teeth while you're out in the field. Uh, so a few things in there as well. And then in this fold-down pocket uh, that you see here, this has a couple of Q-tips, a couple of flosser stick thingies that uh, normally I floss with and then just chew on for like two hours and, and I have in my mouth. Alcohol prep pads, some band-aids, uh, and a few other little miscellaneous little boo-boo kit thing in there. So, so a few things, nothing much, but it's enough of stuff that if I have an issue, uh, or I have a cut, or I just need to be clean, I have it with me. All right, so the next pouch that we have here is my EDC one. Now, this one I have absolutely filled to capacity. Um, same thing, same exact pouch, has the uh, connector straps on the back side here. We'll go ahead and we'll open it up. One of the nice parts about both of these pouches, and you see a lot of these pouches out there, whether they're from Maxpedition, um, you name it. There's a bunch of them out there. And, and again, I forget the name of these pouches particular. And, uh, and I apologize, I'll put the link again down below. 
one of the nice things with these pouches is because most everything is slip in from the top, it's accessible by just unzipping the very top. You don't have to zip all the or unzip all the way down. You can literally take out just the top, unzip just the top, and you can access most everything in here. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and we'll uh, we'll get this opened up, and right away you can see there's quite a bit of stuff in here. I do have a uh, I think it's either a 10 or 15 foot strap or piece of paracord, um, just basic paracord. I have another piece in my pocket as well, but it's always good to have excess cordage whether hanging up a backpack, whether building a, a, a ridge line or putting up a ridge line, any number of different things for cordage. In this, I have quite a few different things. Again, exact same pack as my first aid one. This one has everything that I might need during the day. And literally, I could go in the woods and probably have everything I need for this, including all of uh, at least five C's, okay? So we do have on this this dangly thing, I don't know what to call it, dangly strap, dangly cord. Uh, this is one of the Uberlaben uh, strikers uh, for one of the Uberlaben um, fire steels. Uh, but I do have this always so that I always have at least a 90 degree striker for either a fire steel, which I do have in here. This is one of the small Bayolite uh, fire steels. So at least I've always got a way to make fire or at least spark. So I've always got that. I do have two permanent markers, and these are the small little ones, a little black one and a little red one. I uh, always have a pen. Uh, this one's just a, a basic pen, I think. This is a Hampton Inn. Always good to have pens. Again, in this one, I do have another thing of the Gorilla Glue, uh, one of the minis. Um, again, the Fire Steel, so we've got that. In the back pouch here, we've got a couple of different things. I've got one of the really cheap uh, mylar or space blankets, so at least there's shelter material or at least a reflective material. We've got one of the hot hands, uh, the toe warmers. Uh, these are the toe ones, so these ones actually get warmer than the hand ones, and these are made with a, um, an adhesive uh, strip on it or tab, and you can actually put it on your, your socks. Now this shows on the bottom of socks. I don't recommend on the bottom of socks, I recommend on the top of your toes. Um, on, on maybe the base layer or the top layer of your sock, but if you put it on the bottom, you're walking on it constantly. And it actually isn't, it's gonna warm up, but not as much as on the top. And I apologize for the dogs barking and the cars driving. I'm actually at a local park. Uh, couldn't stay in my house any longer, but I'm social distancing from everybody. And again, I have my, my mask, so. But again, these are the foot ones. They go on top of your toes. Um, for hunting or for even hiking in, in the winter on top of your toes in your boot, this is perfect. It keeps you walking and it warms up. So I've got that in there as well as with the pen, you're writing the rain paper. This is fantastic stuff for making notes, uh, writing, anything you can think of. Um, especially right now with everything going on, it's not a bad idea to write down thoughts and, and emotions and stuff that comes up. So. But we've got a pen, we've got a tablet, and that empties that. However, what we're going to do, flip to the front here, and these have a little pocket on the front, and I do carry, I think this is a, a four-time magnifying glass. Honestly, I've never used it. I don't know if I, pr I ever will, but at least it's another way of uh, maybe trying to get a fire started um, through, obviously, using the sun. Um, but at least I've got it. And if I come across either writing something down or I do come across a map or I have one of my maps, I can use this uh, to, you know, look and see. That's kind of creepy. Anyway, we're not going to do that anymore. But I do have a piece of glass in here for, um, for amplifying the sun's rays and possibly trying to get a fire started. So that's everything on the right side, or excuse me, your left side, my right side. Moving on to this other side, we've got some fire starter uh, things here in the other side. Again, this is kind of everything. Um, so I did throw a lot of little things in here. In one of my other videos, in, in actually the first video, you saw the little sharpener. The little pencil sharpener we had back in grade school. Uh, great for little twigs, the little pencil or smaller twigs. You can get really super fine shavings off of these. 
just make a whole big bunch of them through a couple of sticks and you've got nesting material for your fire. Uh, these are fantastic. Uh, these are the little fuel tabs, uh, the fire starter tabs. They're just the, the really thin uh, piece of cotton uh, that you have and then they're infused with some kind of a fire starting material as well. Also have in here one of these, uh, one of these I don't want to call them mirrors, um, the uh, ferrule lens, I forget what it's called, but this is another lens. Um, it's not really a magnifier, although you could use it as a magnifier, really, um, but it is also for the sun. Now, it doesn't say on here, this is from Adventure Survival Equipment. Um, it doesn't say the amount of magnification on this, uh, but this is also something else that I've wanted to use. I just never had the opportunity, um, but it does stay in my bag stays right there in the pack and you can see it does actually do it does give you some magnification and this is supposed to work really well with the sun and getting the sun's rays into a confined little tiny space again not something i've ever done although i would like to try and depending on what we see here today i probably will and then in here as well i've got tiny little I don't know, survival tool, multi-tool, one of these little key card uh, multi-tool type things. It has a little saw back blade to it, if you can see right there. Little tiny one, nothing much. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even bet my life on, on using that to cut through anything other than maybe, maybe some heavy cordage or some, some small, small stuff, but I'm just going to break it. And most of this stuff anyway is, is really tool based. There is a little can opener. Uh, there on the front, on the front corner. A couple of little tool things for nuts and bolts. A can opener tab here. Um, I'm going to assume, although I hate to assume, that this circle thing, and it's going to be really hard for you to see, you can see those lines on it right there, actually, really easily right there. Um, something mat based. I don't know, it doesn't have any instructions with it at all. But I would assume it's something to do with, uh, with mapping uh, and drawing on a map or using this to, to do grid lines and stuff. So um, on the one side, it's got a can opener, I'm sorry, a screwdriver. And then this is a sharp, sharpened edge. It's definitely not sharp, um, but it does have a sharpened, if you can see. There we go. So somewhat of a sharpened edge point to it um, but I've got this in here again just in case I've got a Swiss Army knife in my pocket I've got a couple of multi tools uh, so really I don't need this for screwdrivers but it's all redundant it's all just in case um, and then in here one of these tiny little they're chintzy um, I've used them they they at least give you an edge somewhat of a working edge one of these little uh, blade sharpeners, knife sharpeners. So there's that. In the pockets, we've got a couple of things. I told you I had this packed. There we go. So in here, a little roll of duct tape. Not much, um, maybe five feet of duct tape, but it's at least, you know, the full inch and a half, almost two inches thick. Um, and it's a roll of duct tape. I mean, you can use it for just about anything, uh, which is good. You can, you can use duct tape for, for again, anything. And then this is a, a much more uh, better quality sharpener. Uh, this one's from Lansky. This is one of their, their multi sharpeners. Uh, it has the coarse and the fine with the ceramic. Uh, it's got the, what is this, the blade? I'm not sure what you would call this, um, a honing strip. Um, for almost like a stropping strip, but it's not for stropping. Uh, but then you have your, your pick type file uh, for anything with serrations, um, as well as taking maybe your, your rolled over edge if you're really, really sharpening and you want to get the burrs off of uh, your blade, just doing it real gently. Um, you can do it toward you, but you know practice first. That way you get good at it, because if you do do it toward you, you could cut yourself, obviously. But I've used this one um, on a number of my different knives and actually has done a pretty decent job. But just like anything, practice.
And on the other side, if you don't carry a, and then on the other side here, if you don't carry a, uh, a multi-tool of any sort, this is a good opportunity to have one in your kit. Uh, this is one of the Gerber ones that has the slide out uh, type of head. Uh, and I have this on or in here all the time. Um, obviously, you know Gerber. Gerber is some really good quality. This one, um, pretty good. I, I carried this multi-tool for years, to be honest with you. Um, use the teeth on it. I think it, this is not, this is the first one I ever owned that was like this. It has the button release on the side so it can slide down in the body. And then it's, that's it. Has the locking mechanism release on the sides here. Um, that way you can access your blade. And this one's the half, where it has the half regular blade, half serrated blade. Um, you know, all the different attachments most of these things come with. Uh, this one has, uh, this one does not have a saw to it, which is okay, because really for your multi-tools, saws aren't that great. Uh, this one does have the scissors, which honestly, I probably use the scissors more than I used, you know, just about any of the other attachments on this. So, um, kind of a great tool and it slides down in there. So it's really packed away. The one I carry on my hip all the time these days is, uh, this new, what is this? The free P4 from Leatherman. Uh, this one I won in a giveaway. I love this one. This one's fantastic. It has the magnetic closures, the magnetic attachment. Um, just a kick butt bomb proof. Has all different types of blades. You know the drill. Um, <laughs> I'm probably going to cut myself here, but I deserve it if I cut myself on my own tool. So, but yeah, just the the main attachments there's or uh, tools on it. There's everything from the saw, a serrated blade a regular standard blade and the scissors and uh, they all work really really well they're super sharp and uh, before I cut myself I'm putting it away all right so that's everything that we have in this kit uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you now everything in here All right, so that was my first aid kit and my EDC kit. And these go with me everywhere I go. They're always on my pack. I can easily transfer them to my person. I can put them on my belt. Uh, my first aid kit, I probably could put in my pocket. My EDC one is a little heavier and I haven't measured it or I haven't weighed it, but it's probably a pound and a half. Um, in all honesty so it is fairly heavy although what i have in here i could probably take this and probably get away with doing it overnight realistically um shelter wise it's it's a little bit of paracord other than what's in my pocket it has a space blanket but um, you know i've got fire starting material i do have cutting material or cutting device um, so I could process some wood, um, mostly relying on breaking it and separating it. Not going to do much splitting with the multi-tool that's in here, but I could, um, and I have before, uh, but that's why we have a belt knife. And I do have the Malone knives, uh, MK98. Uh, this thing's a brute. I absolutely love this knife. Totally, totally love it. Uh, won this on a giveaway a few months ago and just use this thing all the time. I use it at home carving and practicing uh, some, of my, some of my knife work. So these are fantastic. I'll leave a link below.
And as you can see, I put the first aid kit back on the front of my pack. Very stable, it does not come off. It's not coming off unless I need to access it uh, and get stuff out of it. However, it's very easy to unzip and open it from the front of the pack. And as you've seen in some of my past videos, when I hang this on the tree, it's right there. It's always on the front. It's always accessible by anybody who can get to it. I remembered my fork. This is the Light My Fire Titanium Spork. This is the Olicamp XTS pot, uh, Olicamp stove, and the fuel. Uh, my soup is already steaming. It's, it's awesome. It's, it's already good. This pot has a special heat transfer system on the bottom that takes all the heat, puts it into the anodized aluminum and boils within a minute and a half, two minutes when it's on high. You saw I had this not even, not even halfway, uh, the stove, and this thing was cranking. Uh, so of course I'll put links down below of what stove, what pot, and the fuel. So this is the Progresso broccoli cheese with bacon. Bacon because no day starts without bacon. And that soup is already hot. We've got the Vargo titanium mug. We're gonna make up a, pot, a batch of tea. How's everybody holding up with the coronavirus. Does everybody have enough toilet paper? I'll tell you, the people that went out and bought pallets of toilet paper, at least your butts are clean. <laughs> it's a beautiful day here today, Monday. And here in Pennsylvania, they have mandated everybody has to have masks. Well, as you notice, I have a fireplace behind me. I'm in one of the enclosures here at the, uh, at the Lime Bluff Recreation uh, Park. And there's quite a few people out and about. Uh, you've probably heard cars pulling in and out and dogs barking and kids laughing and cheering. People are keeping to themselves. They're socially distancing themselves from everybody. I have seen a few people with masks, but we're outside, we're away from everybody. Really, no one is wearing masks outside. I've got at least the covering, right? Just in case police stop by, but we're in North Central Pennsylvania. Um, I mean, it's hitting everywhere, but it, the numbers are very low here. Um, in the county that I live in, I think we have 33 confirmed cases as of today, I believe 33. Um, still, you know, 33 people that, that uh, are, are dealing with the effects of, of this COVID-19. Um, you know, doesn't matter where it came from, if it was created, if it wasn't, you know, it's a bad thing. It's killed a lot of people on top of the flu, on top of suicide, which is a huge issue, mental health. Um, and, and what I'm doing, getting outside, right? Uh, everybody is stuck inside. And for those of you in towns and in, in big towns and cities, especially, that can't do this, that you're stuck inside, I feel for you. Um, I'm able to get outside. I rode my bike here. You saw the trailer. It's an in-step child carrier. Um, my kids are a little big for it, but we were riding around yesterday and the day before just having a good old time and, um, you know, just enjoying some sunshine. And today it's not bad. Today it's, it's nice. It's near 60 Fahrenheit. Uh, here in the States, we use Fahrenheit. Everywhere else you use centigrade. So um, I don't know what that is, 10, maybe 15 degrees Celsius. I'll have to check. Don't quote me on that. Um, but uh, I'm able to go out in my backyard. I'm able to walk down the street. Um, yes, we have a stay-at-home order. Um, 
Very rarely am I going shopping. Um, I kind of was prepared for this ahead of time. I mean, you see my bag. Um, I have a go bag in my car. I have another bag at my house. Um, uh, using my bike and the, the kid carrier, I'm able to use that as kind of a, a, uh, a trailer for my pack. I wasn't carrying my pack on my back. I had it in the trailer, which is really nice. I know the trailer can hold 80 pounds. It's rated, at least on the back, on the directions for 80 pounds. My kids together are 125 pounds, and we were zipping all over the place. It's heavy, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I know it holds them, so it's going to hold my pack. It's going to hold a tent, and I do plan on doing a multi-day uh, bike camping trip uh, here sometime this year if if this finally goes away. I planned on this last year uh, to do a bike trip and uh, because of some surgeries and some health reasons I wasn't able to. Um, two years ago I had a back injury that nearly broke my back but thankfully I didn't but it still affects me um, every day. Um, so right now I'm, I'm about as healthy as I'm gonna get. I'm loving life, everything is good except for this coronavirus. It's keeping everybody inside, it's keeping everybody home from work, which is hurting. Trust me, um, the unemployment system here in Pennsylvania, um, I hear good things, but there's a lot of bad. And a lot of people still have yet to receive anything from unemployment. We're not allowed to go to work. Um, I'm, I'm not essential. I'm not an essential person. Uh, I don't work for the police. I don't work for fire or EMS or hospitals. So I'm not, you know, an essential employee. So I cannot work right now. Um, no, our company is shut down for the most part. So I'm not allowed to work. Not having any, any not having any income is really hurting. Um, so mentally, this is a big boost. Even though I'm not in the woods, I mean, I'm looking at woods all around us, but it's all private, so you can't walk in there unless you have somebody, unless you have permission from the, the owners. But um, the good thing is I'm outdoors. I'm in the sunshine. I am experiencing fresh air. I'm seeing the sunshine and the wind and hearing the birds chirp. You heard that here a little bit ago. Um, just getting out, you know, that's the big thing. That's, that's a huge boost for your mental health. Um, and I really, really encourage everybody, if you can, if it's safe to do so. Um, I mean, even at this point, if you have a back porch, uh, if you have a deck, if you have somewhere that, uh, even in large apartment buildings, sometimes you have even just a, a small little balcony, right? at least get out there. At least sit in the sunshine if, if it's in the sun. Um, but even if it's not, get outside where you can, you can get some fresh air. You can close your eyes, you can sit on a chair and kind of drift away from the reality that is this COVID-19 pandemic. By the way, pack in, we pack it out as well. So my tea is done, it's now steeping. Um, the soup, I'm gonna enjoy it here in just a minute. So, but put down below where you're from and how you're handling this pandemic. Are you doing anything special? Has this affected you in any way? Are you out of work? Are you still working from home? Are you able to work from home? You've seen me use this before. This is the Olicamp stainless steel cup. Um, fits almost every bottle. Nalgene, and I have this clean canteen. Really good nesting cup. And uh, the lid, the, these handles fold in, so it's really nice and compact. And you can see I've used this many times. I have scoured this thing with Brillo pads to, uh, to get it cleaned off, but that's that's it, but I love the character on the stainless steel. Matches the stainless steel of the bottle. It is a single wall stainless steel clean canteen. It's the 40 ounce, and this goes with me everywhere. Um, perfect bottle for carrying water and boiling water. Um, 
disinfecting it and uh, and getting it you know at least suitable to uh, to drink once it's once you run it through a rag or a cotton bandana of some sort um, but yeah this stays right in my pack as well well I'm gonna sit here and drink my tea listen to the birds watch people people watch watch people people watch cheers hawk up here. It's in this tree. And I'm filming while writing. Can you see it right there in the middle? Beautiful hawk sitting here on this limb.